Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today's video will be showing the full line of Turbo Dork paints. These are metallics and turbo shifting paints, which move from one color to the other in general. And uh, today we're going to look at every single one of them so you can see what the color looks like. And then at, towards the end of the video, I will chat about some of the difficulties that I had um, applying it with airbrush and how well it worked using just a regular brush. <laughs> So my first comment on these are that there are so many colors to choose from and they are gorgeous. We have reds and golds and greens and blues and silvers and purples and you get what I'm saying. There's so much variety and since they will all be sold singly, um, you can choose as you like. Now you cannot tell what it looks like from the paint in the bottle itself. and you can mostly tell what it looks like from the picture they have at the front of their bottle, but I definitely found that the best way to tell is to put it on a model such as these. These are Dungeons and Dragons miniatures, by the way, all dragonborns, because, I mean, why not? As well as Macau's, which are all the Turbo Shift uh, line, except for the very recent expansion, which I ran out of cows to use, otherwise they'd be cows too. Uh, but you'll see that as that we get to them. So I primed all of these with Vallejo's black airbrush primer, as Turbo Dork doesn't currently possess a primer themselves, so they do suggest using a black primer underneath. And I agree that that does seem to work well under these colors. Uh, you can use uh, whatever primer you want, really, but to get the effect that I'm showing you, you will want to use black primer and the black primer just brings out the colors um, of the paint a lot faster than the other primer variants. The paler a primer you get, the more layers you would have to apply unless you're looking for the paint color of the pot itself. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of paints over various primer a little later in the video to better show you what I'm talking about. Now these were all airbrushed with approximately three layers of the paint. It says three to five layers because of the various viscosities of each of these paints. I just went ahead with three layers. Though in some cases when I found that it was a bit too matte for my liking, I decided to brush them over with a damp brush using just the paint itself. It seems like these paints each want to become a pretty satin, not glossy, but a satin metallic as you can see with most of them. So uh, if it doesn't happen through the airbrush, because it might be a bit too thick, the consistency is a bit different than what you expected, then I suggest just going over with a very finely bristled brush, like a dry brush, believe it or not, and a damp brush at that, and applying the paint directly onto it. Now you won't necessarily get that good effect that you want if you're using a larger model than these. It works well for these size models, but if you're using these paints on a tank or some other object that has a big surface area, then you'll want to stick to the airbrush just so that you don't have to worry about paint streaks. Though very fine dry brushes can avoid that effect. You're looking for something with a very soft, fine bristles. Then you can get the glossier satin look if you add more of the airbrush flow improver to your pot because that does definitely seem to make a difference. I use Vallejo airbrush flow improver because it just seemed to work. I didn't particularly want to thin down the colors too much to a watery consistency because they seemed a bit gel-like and they flowed through the brush even though they were too thick. I chose the airbrush flow improver rather than a thinner to sort of maintain an ideal consistency. And the more airbrush flow improver that you add, that more satin will come out to a maximum, I would say, of 50 to 50 ratio paint to airbrush flow improver. Beyond that, and well, you could, it would work, but you would need many layers to see the effect. 
you cannot assume one consistency for all of these paints because every one seemed to have a slightly different consistency, a different viscosity from those being thin enough to go through my 0.5 nozzle alone to those being so thick they came out like a worm, which is definitely not what you want in your airbrush. In those cases, that's when I would use the 50-50 ratio of flow improver to turbo dark paint. You really don't know what you're going to get until you use the paint. So I would suggest uh, if you're going to be airbrushing with them, just add a couple of the flow improver into your pot first and then add your paint in, checking its consistency as it's dropping into the pot and add more flow improver once you have a good idea of what you're going to need to add to a maximum of 50 50 ratio i wouldn't say you'd have too much issue going right up to the 50 50 ratio flow improver if you're less familiar with the consistency that you're looking for and just adding more paint until the result is coming through the airbrush as you want it to be this paint i'm going to try and use with a silver to kind of make a little highlight as if it is silver but with reflected paint and this marble I bet the previous paint would actually work as a pretty nice highlight to it there's so many paints that you could use together I'm excited to try here is part of the newer range this is the start of the newer range black ice which doesn't look like much um hot commodity these are really nice looking this one is a very sparkly one that doesn't quite show it off the base kind of shows it off but this is very sparkly these knees these are really nice paints and i would continue to use them i would just be wary of um using them in anything smaller than a 0.5 nozzle oh notably they do have uh, mixing balls in every one that come pre-mixed well, they come with a mixing ball within. Oh, there was an issue with the rainbow roll. It didn't show up at all on the smaller miniature. It kind of showed up on a bigger piece of plastic that I tried it out on, but they seem to be recalling this particular paint, the rainbow roll. So I'm expecting us to see an improved version in the future. They seem to be in constantly in trying to improve their formulas. So what you find now, you may find even better in the future. Um, they've upgraded their formula to be able to take under freezing temperatures, which is good for any more northern climates that have a risk of freezing during shipment in the winter. Such pretty colors. We're now into the turbo shifts now. All the cows are turbo shift paints. I found that the thicker I put it through the airbrush, the less um, gloss, so you can easily fix even that with dry brushing over top with a paintbrush. But you're getting a basically a satin appearance. Um, not exactly glossy, but a satin appearance through the airbrush if you uh, mix it well. You can apply these paints over other colors, but it just requires more layers to get the effect that you want. I'll show the various colors that I put them on just to display the differences um, after I show you all of these lovely cows. They're so pretty. There's so many varieties. You could certainly find colors to your satisfaction. Um, I'm not certain how accurate it is, but it doesn't seem to be that many distributors um, to local stores. Well, there don't seem to be that many local stores that have them. I'm not certain where your situation is, but Turbodort has a website themselves. And of course, I'm now going to be carrying every single Turbodork other than the rainbow roll until it comes out. So you can always hit me up, you can send an email to the channel if you're nearby. It shouldn't be too costly to send paints out if you have trouble finding it in your local game store. There's some, some pretty, some pretty cows. Right, why did I choose to paint cows? It wasn't just because I happened to have 26 cows. No, I actually bought out my distributor. I would have gotten more cows, but she, she ran out and hasn't restocked yet. Um, I am, I've got plans for these special cows. Whenever we do a battle report, I've got plans, okay? Whenever we do a battle report, we're going to roll a d20, each of us. And if either of us gets a one, you're not going to be playing. 
with your army that you custom painted and built up? No, 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 no. You're going to be playing cows. That's right. So you're going to be facing off on the channel. You're going to possibly be playing cows. It is my Warhammer cow level. If anyone has played Diablo, you understand. Surprise! Cows. And I don't even know what it would be like to face these. So I've already got the stats figured out for the various games. And I do not know what it's going to be like. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to roll it at the start of every one of our battle forts. Someone could be playing cows. They're going to be ferocious cows because I'm thinking, uh, I'm going to try it out first, but I'm thinking they're going to be basically demonic flesh hounds, stats, maybe with better run speed and a herd of cows. It's going to be fantastic. Just you wait. I do not know how powerful they are going to be. I don't know if we're going to have to expand on some rules for this cow level, but that's what we're doing. So prepare. You may think you'd be seeing space marines facing Necrons, but much to our astonishment, you may be seeing space marines facing cows. I, we don't know yet. It's going to be a surprise. <laughs> oh man, there's so many colors. There's so many pretty colors. And again, if you don't find it quite bright enough, quite glossy enough to your satisfaction, you can, with a very fine bristled dry brush, dampen your dry brush and just smoothly go over and it will look lovely. Now, it won't necessarily work for flat surfaces as well, for tanks. So really, you want to use your airbrush for that and just thin down the paint a bit more. If it's looking like it's not as... Um, as satin as it could be, as more matte, then just thin down your formula a bit more and do another layer and it should come out nice and, well, not quite glossy, but close to glossy. Seems to be the case. I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday. Christmas is just around the corner and I was able to finish this just in time. I don't even know what I'm going to do with many of them, but I've got to try them out. Also, as I was painting with the airbrush, I noticed that the metallic particles that make up the paint would blow out like glitter with some of these paints, leading me to understand that the particles are on the larger side, which you'll want to be careful of for smaller airbrush nozzles, though these paints personally did not clog my brush. As I was careful during my testing process, making certain to add flow improver before I handled these guys as soon as I realized their thickness. In truth, because of the various consistencies across the board, I think for small miniatures like this, I would probably just paint it on directly. It looks just fine painted on. So first, what I found is no, to make the painting process easier and quicker, you dry brush the paint on where you want it to go, and then to buff up the, gl the gloss or satin finish on the paint, you apply a last layer um, using a damp brush instead of a dry brush. Although you can use a damp dry brush for this process, particularly if it has very fine um, bristles. What you are looking for is a very fine bristled brush for this purpose. And with that, it come, it makes it as easy to paint with a paintbrush than an airbrush for small miniatures like these. For larger miniatures, as such as tanks, even these cows, I guess, certainly with tanks or anything with large flat surfaces, you would want to use the airbrush. And to amplify the gloss, more than what you may have initially uh, encountered, you can either mix the paint with a airbrush-based gloss varnish or just use more of the Vallejo's Flow Improver, which did seem to help get its sheen even more shiny. These metallics really extend my metallic collection. I love it. And I'm really excited to use them together see what that creates. You've got like an infinite amount of possible paint combinations to make, I'm expecting, whatever color metallic you want. These last four miniatures are the newer 
turbo shift ones around out of cows, which is why these are flowing cloaked dragon horns. You could have a basic silver, or you could have a basic silver that is highlighted with some of these turbo shifts. A metal would be absolutely fantastic with pink tones and tur turquoise tones, or you could have a copper tones with greenish golden as uh, certain highlights. I think it will really bring some realism to metals. I'm going to be trying it out, of course. And I am not entirely certain for the ones that didn't show up as well as others, whether it's um, because they might be missing a little extra, but the majority of them are gorgeous. And they're continually working to improve their formula. So I think this is uh, going to be a nice company to work with. Now, here is what it looks like. I just put two different colors on a piece of plastic that I had primed with black. And that is what it would look like in black, but as in comparison, I also primed something with white. And as you can see, it will look more like what the color is in the bottle itself. And then in gray, it'll be like a highlight of the black, mildly different. And of course, if you put red over red and blue over blue, there's going to be all sorts of differences. You really have to play with these to find out how they will work for you. So I'm going to keep trying them out, keep getting new ones as they come. And uh, Turbled Work uh, gave me these to review and show off to you and try out because I wanted to add them to my business's um, store, which has happened. I now have all of the paints, so I will be trying them out even more so testing out whether um, each one has a specific consistency or whether you really can't determine the consistency of it until you open it up and use it. I don't know that yet, but I am going to test all of that out in the future. This was my first initial um, impressions on the line. I very much enjoy all of these colors. They are gorgeous. They would mix so well together, I am assuming. Um, I'm really thrilled to give them more a shot. Feel free to uh, comment below with any of your questions. All right, I will catch you in the next one and have a fantastic holiday. Bye! We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.